well with us this morning to review the papers of broadcaster and writer Edward Adu and the UK editor of The Big Issue, Paul McNamee. Um, very good morning to you both. Good morning. Right then. Good morning. Let's delve in. Um, I don't often get the time to look at the papers with two kids, so I do relish this, this time that we have together. Um, let's start, Edward, with you and, and The Express, because we've been talking about this story on the show this morning. It's all about migration and the government's, some would say, hard-hitting campaign about cutting numbers. To bring numbers down. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of... Um, that's what, that's what emphasis, I suppose, the wrong term to use, but a pressure on the Prime Minister and on the Home Secretary uh, to bring numbers down. And this is from backbenchers as well and senior Tories who have said, listen, you know, we can thrive, the economy, things can, can move along. Um, we, we've we got too many people. There's, there's clearly too many people. I mean, 606,000 more people arrived in the UK. When I um, came across this story, the first thing that kind of sprung to mind was, OK, OK, you know, bringing numbers down, but then it's about keeping the economy going. It's about those jobs which some people clearly don't want to do. And that's what, you know, migration and, and, and people who come to the country and they they muck in, they do those jobs because clearly it, it helps them, it helps their families, and then they do it well. And it's a problem. I think it's addressing those points and saying, well, okay, how are we going to do this? How are we going to keep the economy going? But then how are we going to convince people? If we are going to bring numbers down, how are we going to convince those people in certain parts of the UK who don't want to do those jobs because it's a, a conversation which I've often had with friends and said, okay, okay, if if you had the opportunity or if you, you, you run a business, will someone local want to do that job that you're paying them an X amount uh, an hour for or is somebody who's willing to do it who's going to come over to the UK and do it? They, they do it. Well, I'll give you a, a prime example. You know, yeah, po um, Polish, uh, not to stereotype, but Polish builders. You know, in my part of town, six o'clock, they're standing by on, on the corner, mm. on the side streets, waiting to, to be picked up to do jobs. And they often do it well, and they're hard workers. I'm not even discrediting and saying that British workers don't do it. But that's the argument here, and I think that's what it comes to. So it's, yeah, it's a lot of pressure who's being applied on the Prime Minister to try and bring numbers down and to say, well, look, in actual fact, you know, we can bring numbers down and the economy can thrive and we can get to the point where there's a kind of less reliance. Yeah, it's interesting, on, isn't on, it? Because um, they're, they're targeting Albania first with, with posters saying, you know, if you do make that journey, we'll detain you, we'll send you back. And they'll roll out that same campaign to other countries. So, so more on that to come for sure, Edward. Um, Paul, should we focus... This is in the Sunday Times. It's, a, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Because it's Sir Keir Starmer really laying out his commitment to climate change and, and, and stopping uh, any drilling in the North Sea. What, what do you think it's, it says about his future commitments to climate policy then? Well, I, I think it's a few things. One, the it, it's become a, a, a motif of complaint from the Tory side that Keir Starmer and Labour don't have any clear policies, they don't know what they stand for, which I think is probably a little unfair because they keep saying what it is they stand for, it's just convenient to, to repeat that. But this is a very, very clear line that, that separates Labour um, from Tory policy and Keir Starmer is saying, as, as you mentioned there in the front page, that uh, he's going to block all new drilling in the North Sea for oil and gas and make, as he has laid out um, Britain a clean energy superpower and um, essentially carbon neutral by 2030, which is a huge commitment. Uh, he's also just a couple of the other numbers around this. His plan is to make half a million new jobs in renewables, which um, you would suspect that the plan is to make them higher paying. Uh, more productive jobs, and um, 50,000 of those are in Scotland, which is where um, a lot of the uh, the replacements going to need to, to happen because of North Sea drilling at the moment. It, it is a difficult one to um, to deliver because you will need investment to get there, and he has said that they will borrow to invest in green enterprises. So again, that's another thing that he's making clear: uh, borrow internationally. Um, to double onshore wind, to triple solar, to quadruple offshore wind. Um, but at the minute, 85% of British homes are heated by gas. So to move from that to getting the energy provided and to make those boilers 
useful from a different kind of energy is going to be very, very costly and very difficult. But at least it is a commitment because if, if the government of the future government is serious about meeting climate targets, um, then they have to have bold new green um, policies. I mean, part of the part of the, the other issue here is that I guess they want to show the SNP. That yes, it's the route, both, isn't it, through Scotland. Scotland? Of course. Yes. Yeah. I mean, Scotland have a minister for just transformation at the moment. Basically, somebody who's saying, if you're going from this work to this work, we will make sure you stay employed. And this is another way to show that Labour are. are listening to that and have got a policy for it. Well, the other big issue that will be a vote winner is food prices. Um, Edward, you know, the last time I went to a supermarket, you know, I scanned everything through, got the overall bill, and I was like, are you kidding me? You know, food prices, it, the inflation is high. You're we not know the only that. One. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and you're and not it's the interesting, the Telegraph, the, what, what they're saying about this is that Rishi Sunak, he's going to speak to bosses, supermarket bosses to try and to basically to devise something which the um, the French uh, are doing. They did this in March, is to, to cap um, prices at supermarkets. And to be fair, I mean, it's it's a logical question uh, as to why wasn't this done sooner? And I, every time when I walk into to supermarkets, as you, as, you, as you were saying, and you see the prices increasing, whether it's milk, whether it's chicken, whether it's egg, whether it's fruits, all types of foods. And I always think about, you know, an average family and they're on an average wage and they're struggling as it is. But then how are they able to to, to, to feed their children and and to try and because it's about stability here, but there's you can't stabilize your uh, what you buy or when the prices are increasing because it's not going to work so it's interesting to see whether this will be whether it will target certain supermarkets or whether it's going to be overall across the whole sector but i think something needs to be done because i mean if, yeah I, i'll give you an example there's a, a, a shower that i i buy which used to be two two pounds or two pounds fifty i went into my local supermarket it's gone it's nearly a fiver now and I'm thinking, wow, that's for like for shower gel. I dread to think what it's like if you're buying like a um, a portion of, of of chicken fries or something, which the prices have certainly gone up in, in the past couple of months. Well, it's even if you go to those budget supermarkets, it's even expensive there. So something has yeah, to give everywhere. at some point. Um, Paul, let's uh, end with you. And, and, and we're talking about this morning because we've we've spoken about Philip Schofield and the fallout from that for a while now. But uh, a few of the papers, they're picking up on the fact that this morning now faces the axe. Yeah, and more than a few of the papers are, are going very big with this morning as it doesn't come as any surprise. Um, and now, according to Sunday Moore and some others, the, the, this morning show, the brand is... A, to quote um, an insider, tarnished beyond repair, uh, and they think that it, that it needs to go because it, there's there's mayhem behind the scenes. People don't want to be booked to go on to it because of all the um, the goings on with Philip Schofield. Uh, it is it is no longer the show that it was. It's not clear whether this is hysterical knee jerk at the moment to fill them col to fill column inches, or this is potentially the show's going to go. It, it is such a weird, it's such a curious position in British culture life this morning. A show that's on mid-morning when, you know, people are broadly, well, a lot of people are at work, so yet still, this is the thing that people talk about. Phil and Holly, as if they are um, uh, the neighbours from down the street that you you need to hear about and you need to know about. It's, it, I find it a remarkable way that they've managed to make that show so big and feel so important or associated with so many people and so anything that, that comes up with it we are all going to talk about it we'll see if it, it does get axed or not it, it, it isn't clear it is all still no speculation but standard. the problem is when the show itself becomes the news that's where there's a problem i don't know about you two but i wonder but you know is, richard and judy you know I mean, I Richard and Judy's camp. Guys, I, I have to leave it there. Yeah. I'm so sorry. We're going to run out of time, but we will have you back in the next hour. So much more to talk about. Uh, this is Sky News Breakfast. We'll have so much more in the next hour. Don't go anywhere. Stay with Sky News.